can cool. go on yeah. to the top 10, actually. Oh, top 10 first? Cool. All right, all right. So, what are we doing top 10 for today? All right, so the top 10 that we are doing and today. And I will try not to peek. <laughs> that is always the hardest part of the top 10. All right, ready? Mm -hmm. Take it from the top. All right, what's up, everybody? You know what it is. It's the Long Story Short Show. We got another video for you, another week, another top 10. And this week, we got... What? What do you think? Marvel Okay, you're right. Kids. Maybe. I mean, some of them is kids. <laughs> All right, so we got what culture's top 10 underrated X-Men characters Marvel should totally be using underrated x-men characters yep. that they are not currently utilizing that they should totally okay that's those are words that were not said but <laughs> they do say that it's not all wolverine you know all right so can i take a guess sure jubilee probably number 10 is chamber okay uh jubilee i'm guessing that one's gonna be like number six yeah, it's going to be high up there. It's not going to be, like, low on the list, for sure. All right, number 10, Chamber. Who's Who Chamber? is Chamber? All right, so is Chamber it? is a mutant with the mutant power of having access to a vast reserve of psychokinetic energy, which, when it first what manifested, blew a hole in his chest and tore off his lower half of his face. Chamber presented a visually stunning example of changes to the body that could be hard to deal with and get over, or get over. Hmm. On top of this... He was originally set up in Scott Liddell and Chris Bocciolo Generation X as the next great potential leader for the mutants, a role which young Jono Starsmore had no desire to take. I guess his name is Jono Sizemore. Um, hmm. Starsmore. <laughs> Jono. Sizemore. <laughs> Jono, Jono Starsmore. Oh, Jono. Um, so basically what I'm getting is he's Cyclops, except besides eye blast, it's like from his mouth down to his chest. He has a hole. Okay, I was like... So is the top lip gone too? Uh, I mean, if you needed to be. That's what I'm thinking. It's like from here to like the chest, just one big huge hole. Yeah, that's what it's looking like. Yeah. So yeah, I huh. mean, I they, can see it. They wanted him to be a leader, so I think they were just looking for badass looking people. Yeah. Because I mean, looking at him. Does he got a cape? No, he doesn't have a cape. He has a trench coat. I'm gonna put the picture oh, right here. Okay. He has a trench coat and he has like this big ass light coming from like the middle of his face. So. Super I mean, cool looking, like you would expect, like if you see like a team pick, yeah. you would definitely think like he's going to be closer to the middle or closer to the front. Cause... Can we get Gambit mixed with Havoc? Can we do that? Is that something we That's can That's basically do? what that guy is. <laughs> All right. Number nine, mm -hmm. Indra. Oh, looks like we got an Indian kid. Okay. Indra's real name is Paras Gavaskar, an Indian teenager with the mutant ability to generate armor and offensive weaponry in mass. He also happens to be Jain, a religion that has strong tenet to absolutely, absolute nonviolence. So huh. it's basically a kid who can make all kinds of armors and weapons, and his whole thing is he doesn't want to hurt nobody, you know. Kind of like Wonder Man, so it's like a waste of powers. How is he different than that girl armor that she creates like a psychic armor actual armor around her but she can like change it in size from what i can see uh this guy's actually making weapons okay like physical weapons that look like weapons like he could like put it on the counter and sell it like she makes like psychic like, like he can make bam, shurikens i'll put armor right there and i'll put him back right there indra yeah so he can make like knives and shirts okay, and stuff that like that sense. yeah so i mean a guy that can make any kind of like weapon that would be cool, cool I guess. Cool, but I don't see how they can really go far with him if he really is like against violence. I mean, I'm trying. They're gonna keep putting him in situations where he's gonna have to fight. Yeah. And it's either he's gonna keep going against that thing, and it's gonna be kind of like that kind of dichotomy. Are like, you gonna break your moral code like uh, a pussy every single time? Or are you not gonna fight like a pussy? Which one is it gonna be? pussy yeah i don't know i mean i'm out here trying to watch people you know use powers like beams and teleport and stuff and this guy can make weapons okay cool cool indra that's cool yeah but you can't that's like 1010 yeah well 1010 doesn't get a lot of show time because all she uses is weapons she doesn't got no moves all right number eight okay dust <laughs> these names are fire <laughs> 
S O O R A Y A Soiraya Kadir is an Afghani Muslim mutant who's first appeared in New X Men just over a year after the terrorist attacks in the World Trade Center in 2001. She was created by writer Grant Morrison and artist Frank Quietly and Ethan Van Shriver and was an important character visually for showing solidarity with Muslim with the Muslim community that was so readily demolished after the terror attacks and still today this day are. Um, Dust has an awesome power set and has been through some rough times, which are ripe for exploration. Capable of turning her body into a sentient sandstorm, she is incredibly adaptable and had also essentially died at one point, which could be interesting to explore from different religious viewpoints. That would be pretty dope, seeing yeah. how like people die in like the Marvel Universe from different religions. That would actually yeah, I mean, be really cool. It would all end with them being like, it all, it's all real. <laughs> it all exists. <laughs> so is she like Get Sandman? She's like Sandman. I'm kind of trying to relate all these. When people. I was reading this, I was like, "Is this just like Sandman with like really, really fine sand?" That's what I'm thinking. Like it's Sandman, but it's a girl and probably a lot nicer. Yeah, it's like uh, I don't know. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, Sandman <laughs> could like grab you, and she can't like grab you. She could just like you know hurt your eyes, Dang. stuff like that. that cut up your skin. That's serious though, especially if you've got contacts. Yeah, I mean, I ain't got context, so that's your kind of problem. <laughs> Number seven, karma. All right. Karma. Xi'an Koi Man, X-I-A-N, mm -hmm. is a mutant karma, formerly of the new mutants, but now grown up as a fully adult character who has several times had a position of authority with the students at Xavier School. Well, yeah, she's older. Okay, she's Smart. a mu a mutant power of psychic possession, may not be too flashy or showy, but all the other aspects of her character leave her in an incredibly rich mind of storytelling content while still having the opportunity of having the student come good figure that we keep seeing with Kitty Pride. We've seen it several times with Pride as a teacher and advisor and now currently as the headmaster of the school, which makes it feel like the Xavier School has hmm. only successfully trained to raise one student. Perhaps it's time to show another student who's come through the war to the other side. So psychic possession yeah like Eno yeah there's so many psychic people in the X-Men like so many psychic people yeah but it's like it. it's all different fields of like psychic from what I can see it's like uh, some people are like psychic like they can read minds some people can pick okay. things up yeah. some people can do both some can do one thing but not the other like as good kind of thing like that so it looks like her whole thing is just like she can possess people why is her name Karma her name um shit i don't know maybe she only does it like this is what's coming to you or something like that <laughs> maybe she only maybe she has like some moral code about it comes around that comes around, come down. all right Anyways, well. number six pixie yeah megan <laughs> quinn is a welsh mutant okay there She's are cool. like no welsh superheroes okay let us have this one <laughs> Seriously though, <laughs> Pixie is a great character. Looking visually non-threatening and with a fun and laid-back attitude, Pixie has actually been through the ringer, just like many of her generation of new mutant students. But her battles have left her battle-ready and have even seen her already become a full-fledged member of the X-Men before. She also has an interesting family backstory that plays on the surprisingly common links between mutant and magic. With her mother being a literal fairy and her father the villainous mutant mastermind, giving her two half-sisters who are just as villainous. There's so much potential for fun, mellow drama, which has always been so popular in the X-Men stories. There was, in Uncanny X-Men. So, they used her? She, yeah, this was so from she, 2017. She's so. part of the newer X-Men that I told you with like Glob and Friends. Yep. So she's part of Glob and Friends. And she was on that side of like, oh no, we can't kill X-Men when they were in that apocalyptic the universe yeah and she was like arguing with armor and they got in a fight it was cool <laughs> but then she got supercharged mm, yeah oh then you'll like these next ones these are all the people they're actually using right now a <laughs> knoll and well we don't know and rock slide <laughs> well um, yeah. i don't know a does some 
shady oh. things. He was the one in Uncanny X Men that stole that vaccine. Oh shit! Okay. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Okay, this is a two for one entry. Both characters make frequent minor appearances, but rarely together these days. Both characters look visibly interesting and have cool powers and are pretty cool in their own right. But that's not why we've added them to this particular list. Hmm. No, the reason the pair finds themselves here is because they're made. Uh, oh, they made a fun pairing with an entertaining banter. But also, it was a pairing rarely seen in any media, let alone comics, that of gay male and straight male friendship. An important area to represent and uh, see more often in the yeah. page. A Nolan Rockslide's entertaining bro double act could add levity to the X books and also drama and new story paths to be explored. I'm guessing a Noel, the dude with the pointy ears, is the one that's gay? Yeah. Yeah. Rockslide is the one that almost uh, died when the glob just put all his globiness in his mouth. Yeah. Gross. <laughs> hey, I like this one. This one was on um, X Men cool. Evolution. Number four, Mero. Mm. Okay, again, Mero just looks badass. Her power set kind. It, okay, it sounds kind of dumb. She has extra bones that can grow out of her body that she can remove as weapons but it and looks tools. So cool. But it. <laughs> it visually looks totally weird and kind of cool in a gross way. I bet that used to be so painful when she first got her powers. Like, extra bones just popping out and she's just like, crack! Yeah, because they're all Break. jagged and spiky and shit like that. Uh, Mero was a former Morlock, a group of mutants whose appearance meant they couldn't pass for normal. So they lived in hiding in the New York sewers. She grew up angry... An angry teenager who would reject this notion of hiding away from the light and start committing terrorist attacks as part of the mutant terror cell Whoa. Gene Nation. Whoa. Yeah. Um, Serious. A whole bunch of stuff has happened. Uh, she was in X Force for a little bit. It looks like she's just a. She's like one of those. She's like X Force, like Saber Oh, totally. Uh, Wolverine kind of thing like that. Like she just does badass shit for the sake of doing badass shit. So. I mean, when you look badass, you gotta do badass shit. There's no reason to look badass if you're not gonna do badass shit. Then you're just like a wasted drawing. Who's somebody that looks badass that never does anything badass? The Thing. The Thing? <laughs> <laughs> Number three, Nate Gray. <laughs> right. oh, what? I'm telling you, this is in 2017, right before oh, yeah, this, this happened. Oh, yeah, this is a, yeah. Actually, a year before they this They probably stuff took, like, this list and it's like, okay, we're listening. <laughs> Okay, we admit, Nate Gray has something of a convoluted and confusing backstory, the son of Scott Summers and Jean Gray, in an alternate universe where Apocalypse ruled the Earth and Mr. Sinister created him without his parents' knowledge. Mm -hmm. Nate Gray survived the seeming collapse of his home reality and became part of the main Marvel Universe, mm -hmm. spending most of his time on his own, not able to trust the many faces that were familiar yet fundamentally different from what he knew, he nevertheless found himself becoming an X-Man several times over the years. Then Ellis Warren came along and created the idea of Nate Gray as a shaman for mutant kind perpetually on the outside but able to help more than any other. I don't really know what that means, but okay. <laughs> I don't really remember, but yeah. Nate Gray. Cool. With the X-Men a little short on the heavy hitter telepaths at the moment, now it seems like the prime time to bring him back in the fold. They don't need any more telepaths. They have so many with him, Legion, Jean Grey. <laughs> hey, this is the guy I saw. Number Great. two, Maggot. <laughs> <laughs> He's not small either. <laughs> Maggot like. gets something of a short sh uh, shrift in the long <laughs> line of X-Men. Yes, he had really weird powers. His digestive system became two semi sentinate giant maggots that he named Eeny oh, and Meeny. <laughs> Eeny and Meeny? Like Eeny, Eeny Meeny, Miney Mo? Uh, that's funny. <laughs> and actually, they fed, they crawled back into him and give him enhanced strength, stamina, and durability. Ew. Oh, and his skin would turn blue and his eyes red. No, gross. That's gross. They crawl back in him? That's gross. But that's why you should be back in comics. This is what makes comics fun. <laughs> Things should be weird and strange and crazy. And guess what? A little bit of fun. So yeah, let's let Maggot come back and be an X-Men with this bizarre, ravenous, autonomous intestines. And okay, if you have to make it all serious, the guy has lived through a concentration camp. Well, lived through is generous. He was killed and then resurrected because, you know, comics. Of course, comics. Everyone that's how it dies goes. and comes back. Who's number one? Adam X, the X Stream. What? I don't know. I've never heard of him, but I guess he looks extreme. This dude's got two swords, and then he's got fucking blades on his fucking shoulders. He has blades on his wrists. 
his blades on his belt. Bet you weren't expecting this one. The most 90s of 90s X-Men. And yes, oh, that is why. even including any character with an absurd amount of patches and giant guns about their person. Adam X, the X-Dream, you really have to include that, is perhaps the most of its kind of, uh, most of its time kind of character imaginable. Okay, the most 90s character we've ever seen, basically, is Adam. X, the extreme. extreme. <laughs> okay, ultimately, all Adam X would wind up being is a crazy design and, a- and absurd power set. He can ignite the oxygen in another person's blood because... Wait, he can ignite... I'm putting this Someone down. Someone else's blood? Okay, yeah, so this guy can ignite oxygen. So I guess he can just combust oxygen, and he can even combust the oxygen in your blood. That's okay. Omega level type That is crap Omega right level. There. That is pretty fucking crazy. Oh my gosh. Okay, so there's this character out there with a really striking, though now a little dated design, with a crazy <laughs> bizarre power set, and the barest bones of a backstory that already make him really interesting with a foot in both the mutant and cosmic worlds of Marvel. He's a character that could become literally anything, and all he needs is a bit of creative backstory and a refresh in design department. And hey, the 90s are kind of in again, right? All right, so that's all 10. Cool. Um, yeah, I thought we were going to see a couple. I thought we were going to see, like, Mr. Sinister. I thought right. we were going to see, like, all kinds of, like, stuff. But Jubilee was not on the list. Yeah, why well, was it Jubilee on I the was list? highly upset. I thought Spike from X-Men Evolution. Uh, Spike should have been definitely on that list. I thought there was going to be a couple more people. But, wow. Uh, what do you think, though? What did you think? think Still about, a pretty like, good, list? solid list. Yeah. Like, surprised they left out certain people, but... Looking back, there's not, like, one person I wouldn't take off the list. Yeah. I mean, some of these people uh, just, like, try to read their names and, like, their power sets and, like, their whole backstory is just, like, confusing in itself. But, I mean, all of them look solid. All of them look like really all you need for comics is, like, a a solid backstory and a good design. Yeah. All these characters got it, so... Nice. Nice. And it's Very good list, for and sure. from uh, what I could remember, what we saw on the list, like, half of them are in that Uncanny X-Men in, like, the first mm-hmm. ten issues. So, bam, they're doing exactly what we need them to do. Exactly. <laughs> Any last thoughts? No. Awesome list for All right. X-Men. Nice. We like this list. So, again, this is a list discussion that we're recording at Esquad Up, E-S-Q-U-A-D-U-P, on Twitch. Or you could catch this in the playlist on Long Story Short Show on YouTube. Uh, you can catch all the stuff that we do on Twitch, uh, mm-hmm. mostly uh, discussion videos and all that, not really the gameplay, uh, on YouTube at Long Story Short Show. So please follow it, subscribe, like, hit that bell so you can know every time we upload something, you know, yeah. join in on the fun too. Yeah, and we'll see you guys in the next <laughs> discussion. All right. We'll catch y'all later. <laughs> Bye.